Hey, welcome to the channel. So today we are going to look at the Spark Shell. It's a super versatile tool that you can use as a data engineer. So I wish I had known about this when I was getting started. Today I probably use it like most of the time. It's like perfect for prototyping a solution or even like in production, if you need to go and debug your data set, it's like perfect. So that's one of the good things about this Spark Shell, right? We can use it on our local machine. We can use it like to explore data, you know, getting started, explore like a data set on a local machine. We can also do the same thing on production. So if you're using say EMR in AWS, you can just uh, SSH into the master node and start the Spark Shell over there and then explore your data. So let's get started. So starting the Spark Shell, super simple. Just go Spark Shell. If this doesn't work for you, I will link to my previous video where you can see how to get started with it. So it takes a minute. So as you, so if you look carefully, you see that it's taken master local star. So that's like the default. It'll use whatever cores you have on your local system. And it has gone ahead and created a Spark context for us as well as a Spark session. So we'll be using the Spark session mostly. Let's see what we can do. I already have a simple CSV file here that we'll try and play around with. Let's do val f dot spark dot read dot. We one of the advantages uh, there is autocomplete, so we don't need to think too much about not. I mean, we don't have to worry too much about not knowing the API. We have autocomplete here to help us. So we have CSV. See, let's fit it in. So I'm not sure whether this is getting picked up, but I have a lot of dogs in my compound and they always bark when I'm recording. I can't do anything about it. Okay, show. Ah, so I just did the default. So the first line should have been the headings. There should be a way. I don't know how to do that right now, but there should be a simple, I'm pretty sure pass an option and tell it which is the heading. Uh, I can even do things like imports, right? I'll do import spark.mp implicit. So that will let me create a data frame out of sequence like that. Word dot poncho. Whoops. Sometimes I get carried away with autocomplete. You just type it out there. So these are this is just the basics of what you can do with the spark shell so this by itself is pretty useful so many a times if your project is using parquet format and all you can just get started with it right away but today i'm going to show you something a little bit different i'm going to show you how to process xml files so by default if you notice spark.read there's no out of the box support xml you've got json and csv and parquet but there's no xml but we can use a third party dependency to help us read that XML and Spark Shell has an e easy way to do it. So it's quite similar to what Maven is doing. So it's exactly the group and artifact ID that we specify in Maven dependencies is the same thing we specify to the Spark Shell and we can get it imported and play around with it. So next, let's look at that. So getting this started is super simple. Spark shell and we use the packages switch and specify like this is the Maven convention. We got the group ID, artifact ID, and the version. Hit enter. I already have this on my system, so it should be a it should be quick. You may need to depending on your internet speed. Maybe fast for you as well. Okay. So the first thing we'll do is import com dot autocomplete is awesome. Dot sorry, not SQL XML. Okay, so now when we try to do spark dot read dot, I have the XML option. 
let's quickly take a look at the XML we're going to be working with. So here it is. It's uh, just a sample XML I got off the internet. Many people uh, use it. So in let's think of terms in, of CSV files or JSON files. Each line is a record, but over here in XML, it's not that way. As you can see, there are multiple tags. So we need to tell it what the topmost tag is to consider as a record. So in this case, it's going to be book. So now the way to do that is via some options. Three dot option. Book dot XML and uh, one thing to note is I'm I'm able to do books or XML and that the other CSV file as is because I all have it in my local path. So it depends on where it is on your system. If you're doing this on a server, you could give an HDFS location or if you're using EMR, you could even give an S3 location and it will still work. Oops, we forgot to assign it to anything. So, well f is equal to that once more then df dot show uh let me just close this yep looks good so if you see the id column it was an attribute and it has the convention it uses is it uh, appends an underscore over there one more good feature this uh, shell has is uh, it lets us do multi-line commands right so far we've been just using single line commands but we can do multi-line we just need to go into paste mode so how do i what shall we do i'm gonna i'm gonna create a custom schema just to show you that this dependency that we're using so the default is to infer a schema but if you want you can control it with your own schema you can give it a schema and it'll take just that so import dog dot Org dot apache dot spark sql dot types schema dot type okay uh, let me look at that xml file once again let's just take the title and the price so title string type right Okay, let's just do two fields, close it out, control D. And now we go back here. Let's me close this. I can do a dot schema and give it a custom schema. Yeah, F dot go. There you see now I just have title and the price dot print schema and it's taking the types that we specified. So this is it. This is like a basic demo of how you can use the Spark shell to prototype your code and explore your data sets and it's extremely versatile and useful. I'm going to link to the, the Spark XML Git. Yeah, have a look at the documentation there. It is ext it, extremely nice. It's well documented. It has uh, very good defaults. And that's about it. I hope you like this video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell icon, do all that. Helps me out. Thank you.